Hey, what's going on everyone? It's uh, 12 Pants here. We've got another commentary. Since the last one was so upbeat and fantastic and I really enjoyed talking about Knife Cram, uh, as I'm sure you enjoyed listening to it, all five of you. Um, which was me twice. And I thought, well, let's do another one. But what I went to touch on, because I forgot to do it in the last video, I suppose is, because it just kind of comes out of the blue and it, it, it's in a vacuum. You're like, what, what, what is this? Why are we doing this? Well, today I'm going to talk a little bit about looking back and moving forward simultaneously in a kind of roundabout way. Uh, specifically, I'll tell you, first of all, what our plans are going forward here. I like this concept, okay? I do like the idea of these commentaries. Currently, we're not firing all the cylinders. I'll concede this one. I think we can get into the right place with them, but it's going to take us a little bit of time. Of course, I'd like to give you some actual gaming content, not just uh, some background, some sort of window dressing as I just chat shit about anything, right? The weirdest, randomest things. So we'll, we'll be doing that too. Um, and hopefully, you know, we'll make some entertaining content. Now, on to the show. The past is... Uh, What's well, the past, right? The past has no value. I, you know, when I get into this, is one of those, like, whoa, mind-blown stoner-esque moments where you think about the past and it just it just doesn't exist, right? It's not... Okay, if you want to get into a time isn't linear kind of everything is happening simultaneously, just we're in different perspectives, it's almost like a different superposition, you know, if you're familiar with some quantum mechanics, this is kind of what... I mean, that's kind of multiverse theory, um, but of course, if infinity is infinity, and actually blew my mind that infinity isn't infinity, thanks Neil deGrasse Tyson, that you can have more than infinity, which, how that makes, you're right, how that works, I don't know, ask Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's a much smarter man, obviously, I, don't, I didn't even need to say that, um, but it doesn't exist, it's not tangible. And this seems obvious, but then I think it, and like, I see these scenes in my head, these things that happen, they're so vivid, they mean so much to me. But they're, they're not real. And, as we all know, human memory is infamously uh, spotty, right? It's unreliable, you can't trust it. It's so easy to game it, you know? You can inception your way into other people's memories very easily, you know? It's been done time and time again, you can plant memories into people that they never have. You just keep saying to someone, oh, you remember this one time, and you start to describe it, and they start, oh, yeah, and they, they build the story. You put it, you build it into the head, and they are convinced that it's their own memory. So our memories are awful tools. They're, they're inaccurate and unreliable, and we shouldn't trust them. But we're also very defensive about these kind of things, hence why the most common and actually probably the worst argument you ever have with people, because there's no good resolution to this, is when you say something and you, and you didn't... And you say it incorrectly, but you won't accept it. So if I was telling you, um, uh, you know, 2 plus 2 is 5, and this doesn't work with math, so I don't know why I'm giving this example, and someone goes, you mean 4? I, I said 4. No, you didn't. No, I did. Right? Like, that ha why that even happens is because one, our memories are useless, and two, we believe absolutely in them despite this. Right? It it's kind of crazy that we know they're bad, but we, we trust them more than in anything. More than somebody. Well, I guess that's just your memory and somebody else's, and they're both equally unreliable. So that's where those situations arise, and you'll never get a satisfactory result. Unless you're a very, uh,. <laughs> You're the good kind of person who goes, oh, okay. But I know a lot of people who just... No. They won't give you that inch of ground. The, I mean, so the reason we have memory, of course, is so that we learn things. And we're only supposed to retain, and we only do retain, as, as things are all working correctly, we only retain memories that hold information that we deem to be relevant for the future in some form or another, right? So... You know, classic example is hot stove, right? You burn your hand, you remember doing it. I mean, we remember our worst failings usually quite vividly. I know I certainly do. Because you can take a lot from them in a lot. It, it's your big 
failures, it's your mistakes that you learn from, you know, that's a bit of a cliche about learning from mistakes, but that's literally how you learn, you know? You don't really learn anything by sort of accidentally being right all the time. Uh, or purposefully. So, we're supposed to be able to learn from it, though of course it's notoriously spotty, so a little bit sketchy there. But the idea that it just doesn't exist to me is, is what, because memories are nothing. Especially when you factor in that unreliability, it might as well be a delusion, it might as well be a dream. And of course dreams feel very real. You ever have that thing where you're like, did I dream that or did that happen? Because they're both memories at that point, you remember the dream, somehow. It's weird, you know, 95% of dreams you just can't remember, but sometimes you remember them like they were real. Um, but then there's a, there's a lot of things you don't remember. Like, just tons you don't remember. In fact, it's scary when you think about it. You don't remember 90% of the things that have happened in your life. You remember all the big moments and also certain sort of random triggers. You know, you get those nostalgic sort of smells and sounds, uh, you know. I could put the PlayStation 1 boot up sound in here and it would trigger everyone simultaneously. But, oh, yes, I know the sound. Uh, but there's no sort of... I'd argue there's no point to them. I don't know why we retain them. But they're just little sort of fragments that I've got through. But you, you do genuinely not remember 90% of your life. Which is, again, a little bit spooky. You know, if I asked you what you had for breakfast last Tuesday, 90% of people won't remember, right? But you, you'll you remember, um, a lot of people remember, say, their first day of school, right? And that's, that could be 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago for some people, right? Like, but they would remember it more than what they had for breakfast last week. And that's, it's a weird thing because we don't, we don't really choose our memories as such. Uh, you don't commit things to memory, it's not, okay, I will remember this forever. I mean, you can you can decide to, uh, on a very uh, artificial level, if you're like, here's a bit of information, I'm gonna just write it down, I'm gonna repeat it to myself every day until it's ingrained. Okay, I mean, that's, that's learning things, right? You can, that's rote memory, you can memorize all kinds of things. But when it comes to just two decades later, what do you remember about being a kid? Oh, well... It's, it's very sort of random. It's just little bits and pieces here and there. And like, why do, you know, sometimes you think, why do I remember this so vividly? Why do I have these such clear memories of things? Well, I don't know. You come to me looking for answers, I don't have them. But the past is there to be learned from, right? We, we get that. We're also aware that living in the past is a dangerous thing. I'm the... Worst person. The absolute, I mean, just in general, I'm the worst person. But when it comes to that, I am the worst offender of sort of, it's gazing too long into the abyss, thus it gazes back into you. That's what sort of always looking back does. Because you just constantly remember all your screw ups and your mistakes and, and the choices, the bad choices that led you where they led you. And you always think, if I just did this, or what if I did this? So this would be the, and it doesn't, it, there's nothing to it, right? You don't get anything from doing that, but a lot of us fall into that trap because it's, I don't know, it's seductive. It's the idea of what could, I could have had a perfect life if I just played it out right. The truth is you probably never could have, right? Like, at some point you've got to make a mistake. I don't care who you are. And what you don't sort of remember when you're thinking of all those bad decisions is you don't remember that Really, the majority of your choices were pretty good. One, because you're alive and, and listening to this. So, the fact that you, you, you can hear this means most of your decisions were very, very sound. Um, but everyone has regrets, right? I mean, especially the people who say they don't. Sure. I, I You can have a very... Um, how would I describe that? A front to it. You can live your life in a sort of no regrets attitude, which is different to really not having regrets. I think when people say, you know... No regrets. It doesn't mean you don't have regrets, it just means you don't... They don't help hold weight to you. You don't let them dictate how you act going forward. And of course, that's what it's about, isn't it? The past is there to inform the future. So you have to look back into your past and, and take the, the best lessons you can and move forward. And the truth is, we do. We get better all the time at everything. If you want proof of that, go watch the old videos on this channel, right? Like. 
everything improves. And even, and especially when you feel like you're spinning your wheels. I'll be honest, I feel like I've been spinning my wheels out here for like four years. I don't remember th anything. I, you know, I remember leaving school and then all of a sudden that's like seven years ago. Right? What, what happened? What happened in seven years? Not seven years worth of things that I remember. Nothing significant, right? So it's important to remember that you, you are always sort of growing and improving and learning and that is of course the point. Not that there is a point to life, but that's there is a a point that most people would agree is is worth doing. And thus we get to well what now? Where, where do we where do we go with this? I think what's important to always bear in mind is that you might not be able to change the past, right? But you can change you, and you can change your future to an extent. And you, they can, you can have plenty of arguments and, and discussions about how much control we have. Is free will an illusion? Yes, it is, but I hate people that use that as a, an excuse to sort of limit their own agency. And it's also a game of semantics, because on some level, you're making a choice. You're just... It, it's still dependent on you and your characteristics and your inclinations, right? It's not... Oh my brick! It's almost that um, God, it used to be on the Ricky Gervais show. The best discussion they'd ever have was Carl Pilkington trying to figure out whether it's him or his brain that makes decisions. He regarded them as two separate entities, and that's kind of what that uh, a lot of people who follow that line of logic seem to think. It's kind of like, no, it's not you making decisions. It's your brain. It's your subconscious. I mean, that is you. It's still. I, I think it's just. When you sort of extrapolate that and sort of do your rationing and logic and apply that, what you really do is you apply that retroactively. You make a decision and then you rationalize it. You don't rationalize it, make your, the cases for your, all the choices you have and then choose the best one. A lot of the time, yeah, you do have a leaning and then you're just looking for reasons to justify that leaning. Sometimes consciously, mostly subconsciously. But it's still you, you're still making the decision. So I don't think that's, um, I don't like that because it, it gets kind of nihilistic and, and nobody likes a nihilist, right? Nobody likes someone who believes in nothing, who is just like, well, whatever, it's all meaningless. We're all going to die. Woohoo. I mean, it's true. It is all meaningless and we are all going to die. <laughs> There's your uh, motivational message of the day. But we, you have an opportunity. I wouldn't say a duty, I wouldn't, but you have an opportunity to be as good as you can, to be the best you that you can be, and to achieve as much as you can. And if you're listening, you want, okay, circumstances allowing, right? But if you're listening to this, you've got internet access, uh, you know, you can see YouTube. You have essentially all the tools you need to become whatever you want to be within reason, okay? If you're like five foot five, you're probably never gonna be a basketball player. I'm sorry, that's just, you know, you know, I couldn't be a basketball player. You can't. It, it's sad. It's it's sad. It's tragic. But you can learn. And you can educate yourself in any vein you wish. Uh, and the, the beauty of the internet is you have everything. You have this whole, this repository of all of human knowledge just at your fingertips. If you've got a smartphone, you can pull out and Google anything, right? I don't know how I got here from talking about the past. I don't know where I'm going for the future. But that was another commentary with no logic, no rhyme or reason. <laughs> Thank you for listening.